Hi there, my name's Vince from mymakefence.com and in this video today we're going to try and fix this Apple keyboard. This is model number A1243 and I bought this and I also bought another two of them off uh, another business seller as well before doing any researching. And this arrived today and I thought, oh, you know, is there going to be screws hidden under here and here? I thought I'll have a quick look online first of all and basically they are not repairable. This has all got glue along here so you've got to heat them up, pry them off and they're known for basically failing. So I mean it is a lovely keyboard, look at the aluminium finish there, it feels like a quality product but it's not really a serviceable product. Now reading up about how to fix it, believe it or not, most people say it's fine if you've just got a sticky button because you can pop it off, give it a clean, often that will, that will fix it. On this one here we have rows that are not working and the fix most people say is run it under a tap and dry it off or put it in the dishwasher and dry it off. Now the thing is I'm 99% sure that that's not the issue in this case because none of the keys are sticking. I think what's happening is it's going to be something on the little control board up here one of the chips that have failed, but I kind of need to eliminate the fact that it could be something spilt on this in the past, because what's gonna happen with a keyboard, often things do get spilt on it. So the seller might have just given it a really good clean, the keys might all be fine, but that doesn't mean that the membrane on the inside of it is not kind of sticky and dirty. So what I'm gonna do is I am actually gonna wash it before taking it apart, because once I take it apart, it's not gonna go back together again. It looks like you need an awful lot of force to take it apart, and unless I kind of get spares off another one, I've got a feeling that all the ones I get, unless they're just dirty keys, are gonna be something wrong with the, the, the main board itself. But actually, I'm not too bothered about having something working at the end. I don't even own a Mac myself, but you can connect this to a Windows 10. What I do wanna see is just to kind of prove what the fault is. So looking at the other ones online, it looks like the membrane is connected to the main board by two ribbon cables. So what I'm thinking is, because I have some keys working, uh, most are not, I'm wondering could it be a problem with maybe something's come out from that ribbon cable, maybe it's not connected anymore, maybe this was dropped and it somehow popped out, or there might well be some kind of liquid damage which has gone onto one of the chips somewhere and damaged it. So to begin with, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you it not working, so I've just got a little laptop down here, in fact I'll do that right now. I've just got it on WordPad at the moment. So I've got the font big so you can actually see. So if I start here, you can see, let's put this here now. Hopefully you'll just be able to see it. Right, look, Q you can see works, W works, E doesn't, R works, T no, Y no, U yes, I O P. So there's quite a few working on that one, but now watch this one, nothing works on that row there, and nothing works on this row here. Quite a few of the numbers work, not all of them, but quite a few. And this one here, look, nothing, nothing, and then six, oh, hold on. Well, it's doing something. I think when I plugged it into the other computer, it did work. So you can see basically that out of all the keys, it looks like about 80% of them are not working. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna wash it with tap water, I'm gonna use deionized water. I'm gonna put, put it in the bath down there. I've got a big tub of deionized water. Obviously I don't wanna use it all because that's what I use in my ultrasonic cleaner. But I'm just gonna fill up about this much down at the bottom. I'm gonna put the keys in first and I'm gonna give it all a splash around just to see if any of that can work its way in. And you never know, it might clean it up if it is a membrane problem. So for example, there might well be something that's shortened together or something that's knocking out all those lines. I really don't know. And then if that doesn't fix it, which I don't think it will, we'll get the heat on it, get the hair dry on it, give it a good heat up, prise it apart, and then see if we can prove what the fault is. So let me get some water up here. Right, so you can see there, big amount of deionized water. So I believe deionized water doesn't have like the salts and the minerals and stuff in it. And they're the things, it's not the water that damages electronics, it's the, the salts and the minerals in it that can cause like a build up and then short circuits and stuff like that. But remember the idea is that I'm gonna be dipping it in this and getting using a toothbrush, washing it all around the keys and stuff. And then after that, 
I'm going to be drying it out really, really well. Now, unfortunately, I can't use this in my ultrasonic cleaner because it's just far too big. This keyboard is very, very wide. Let's pop it in here and let's see what's going to happen. And uh, I'm going to get the toothbrush, splush it all around, and then what I can do is I can turn this upside down, and then it will be fully submerged. You can see there the keys are all the way in there. Right, so I'm just getting an old toothbrush, and I'm going to work it into all the keys. Okay, so I'm going to carry on with this for a while and then I'll pick up the filming when I've just finished and we'll start drying it with a hairdryer. Actually, I forgot to mention that a lot of you might think it's the USB cable. Now, I'm not saying it's not the USB cable, but basically it is recognising certain key inputs and more importantly, when I, plug my, whoops, when I plug my wireless mouse into this USB port here, because it is quite a nice keyboard, it's got two additional USB ports, then that works perfectly. So I'm thinking if there was a problem with the actual USB cable, then it wouldn't allow my mouse to work. That's what I'm thinking anyway, because it's got four pins in there. Two are gonna be for data, and then uh, one for positive, one for negative. So I'm pretty sure a wireless mouse is gonna need all four wires to work. So I really do believe it's not a problem for the cable. As well as that, first of all, when I got it, I was bending this, so I was pressing the key that didn't work, and I was bending it on all the bends just to see if it would come back, and it didn't. What is quite surprising, it's probably not gonna come up here, but there is actually lots of dirt coming out of it. So although the keyboard itself looks spotless, I mean, look at it all. It's, there's loads of dirt coming out, and this wasn't from my bath beforehand. Look at that. So that makes me think that this could have been in a real bad state, but, you know, not, not to sell it to me, but maybe when it went faulty, it got a really good clean, just a wet wipe all over, or it could be to sell it to make it look better. But definitely when I've put it in here now, there's a lot of dirt coming out. So that could be a promise inside. I've got it out, I've drip dried it as good as I could, and now I'm just uh, wrapping it up in a towel, getting rid of most of the water on the outside, and then I'm gonna get a hair dryer, bring it to the bedroom, and basically just heat it up and uh, it will probably be useful for me anyway because I have to heat it up to take the back off. So uh, I'll heat it up and then test it. If it's still exactly the same as it was, which I'm pretty sure it will, I'm going to take it apart and then try to work out what's happened to this one. So in a way, yeah, it was silly me buying the other two because that means I'm going to have three ones that are unfixable. But at least then I might be able to swap a few chips over and something. And even if we get it working without actually uh, putting it all back together, if we can just see what it is to prove what the fault was, then I think that will be interesting to know because maybe one of the chips on the board up here are prone to failing. Because when you read the reviews, in other reviews, when you type in, Apple A1243 keys not working. Loads of people say that they definitely didn't spill anything on their board. <laughs> loads of people say they did spill stuff on their board, hence the reason why I'm cleaning it. But uh, loads of people say they didn't spill anything on the board unless another family member did or something, and it just stopped working. So maybe there is a chip in here which is prone to failure. So as long as I haven't got the same fault on all three boards, we should be able to swap a few things around and test it out. Right, so I mean, although that looks dry on the inside, it's still gonna be uh, sopping wet. Let's get a hairdryer on it. Right, it certainly feels dry now. Obviously the inside could be still completely saturated, but I'm not gonna leave it for like 24 hours. I'm gonna give it a go now, so I'm gonna pop it back into the computer and let's see if it does anything different. Well, rather than plugging it into my little GPD pocket, which I actually like, this laptop is rarely used now because it's just so uh, so old and slow. So let's uh, plug it in, and then if I damage this laptop, I won't be as heartbroken. Right, so we're still recognising it as a USB. Let it just set itself up. There you go, keyboard hub. Should I open up WordPad? 
the font nice and big. Right, here goes. No, okay, so uh, at this moment in time, nothing's working now. Right, that's that keyboard there. Well, right, okay, so by putting water in it, it looks like it's, uh, unless it just hasn't dried out properly yet, but it's not doing, I mean, it's doing something different, but right now it's not doing anything at all. So, I think, let's uh, let's take it apart, because I can't be bothered to wait like 24 hours with this on, on top of a radiator or something to dry out fully. I would have thought that putting the heat on it from the hairdryer would have, would have dried that out. Let me just try a different USB port. No, there's nothing happening. I'm just going to double check to see if these little USB ports are still working. So I'm going to get a little mouse up here. Okay, I just heard it made a, a few binging noises when I was just getting this keyboard. I thought I'd try a keyboard because then it means that the key inputs will be travelling down this cable here. So I suppose it will eliminate the cable. Let's plug it into there now. Right, so there's the cursor there. Yeah, QWERTY. Right, so so we can sort of eliminate the USB cable, can't we? Because the key, another keyboard's working down through it. Let's just try the other port here. So whatever it is on this main board that deals with like the USB hub side of things, that's definitely still working. Yeah. Right, okay, but yeah, every time we do something on this keyboard, it's not working. So, that says to me it's either going to be that the membrane thing is gone completely, or the chip that deals with the key inputs is gone. Well, look, it's interesting because that, that is a fix, you know, that is a fix that everybody talks about online, either putting it in their dishwasher or run it in running it under tap water and funny enough a lot of people say is this a joke but then read the comments and so many people say thanks it works you know if you look watch a YouTube video or go onto the different forums and stuff right so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this downstairs to the blue mat let's try to get it apart and see what's happening just quickly because you know these keys are not working now I'm trying to think well why would the distilled water stop them from working I am going to get the hairdryer on it one more time and they uh, give it a good blast everywhere, just in case it does need just a little bit more drying out. Okay, so I heated it all up again. It didn't make any difference. Nothing is working, not one button's working now, but yet the USB ports here and here, both of them are still working fine, and when you plug it in, it's still being recognized. So for me, that's really, really interesting. I didn't think that the ionized water would make it worse, Unless, of course, there's a whole layer on the membrane in, in, uh, inside here, which there could be. Now, apparently, the membrane is, like, welded, spot welded or something. So, once I take this apart, it's only going to be a learning experience. This isn't going to be working. I'm not going to be able to get it back together. Like I said earlier, I just want to find out what's wrong with it, because I made a mistake. I shouldn't have bought these. And unless you just want to buy, buy it, buy spares to take the keys off, I think you're probably wasting your time. Obviously, there might be some of you watching this that might repair these and then you know they are fixable, but from the little bit of research that I've done, it looks like they're not fixable because of the way they're put together. Now, I'm sure if I was to heat it up for ages and do it all carefully, then maybe it, I might be successful. But remember, this is aluminium, so it's gonna be very easy to put a kink in this. And once I put a kink in this, it'd probably be unlikely that I would get it to lie flat again. So I'm just gonna make a start on, uh, on it and then I'll add more and more heat to this back bit. I just want to kind of... try to just get a little bit in there to allow the heat start to go inside. There we go. Okay, I can hear it. Do you know what? I'm wondering if I was to get like a paint scraper, whether I'd be able to get in there and then, uh, oh, here we go. Okay, 
Okay, that edge bit came off okay. So maybe if I do it on the... Actually, the ribbon cables are up the top, so I've got to do it all at the bottom. But it's going to take quite some time, so I'll just obviously fast forward through it all. I'm going to try and get the filler knife up there because it's uh, it's bigger. This is this is fine for the edges, but as you start to get further up, it gets a bit hard. really getting there now and I don't think I've uh, really bashed anything up too much yet but I suppose it's the top bit which is going to be critical because that's the bit where the ribbon cables are That was bad, I went all the way up there. And again. Right, let's see now if I can start to leave with that. There we go. Well, that wasn't as bad as I thought. Look, I haven't bent that, I don't think. Now, have I damaged the ribbon cables? I don't think I have. Right, so, it's hard to see with all the mess in here. Now, ignore, oh no, look, look, look. I was gonna say ignore the marks because they would have been from here. But I'm not sure if they are because, yeah, let me zoom in on one spot and then I'll show you. This looks rusty. Right, have a look at these dots here. So, where are we now? Here, watch. Can you see? That's on the actual board. Look, there's loads of them. Let's move along to this one here. Look at that one. And that's not from my dirty filler knife because my dirty filler knife would be making marks on the actual glue not on the board. So that's 100% water that's been sat there for a while and that hasn't just happened now in the last 20 minutes, look. So I think you can safely say that this board has been water damaged or coffee damaged or some sort of liquid damaged. Yeah, look, and there's loads of them. Look over here, there's huge amounts this side. Look at that one there. Yeah, okay. Right, let's uh, zoom out and let's take the board out here and let's see if we can see any damage on the board and also this will give us access to the ribbon cables. I'm quite excited about this one. So in theory, I'm just thinking, if, let's say, the board was okay, you could get the keys and the membrane from a different board. So I know you can see that this is all spot welded, so it'd be very, very hard or near enough impossible to be able to uh, actually swap the membranes over, but you could just swap the whole front plate because we just have a ribbon cable here and a ribbon cable here. And then you see if there was a problem with the membrane under the keys, that would solve that one. And vice versa, if you had another board that had a problem with this little logic board or whatever you call it up here, then you could swap it around. So maybe if you had a few of them, you might be able to get one working one. Remember, I've got another two awaiting delivery. Right, so that's that. So let's undo these ribbon cables. Oh, I can see water up here. Let's zoom in. So 
Let's undo this one. Take that one out. And let's do this one here. And that's that one there. Right, there's definitely water here. So maybe if I dry up the connectors, you never know, it might be okay. I wonder if there's a way I can prove the... Uh, I don't think it's as simple as I was going to say if I was to get my meter and go across some of these ones here and press different buttons. I wonder could I find out which one is like the... if there's one in common or something, but I'm not sure if keyboards work that way. I think they might be more clever than that. Right, so what I can definitely do now is I can double check my USB cable, can't I? Because I've got the pins here and I've got the other end here, so I can definitely check for continuity between here and here. And then I can get some IPA, some isopropyl alcohol, and basically I can clean all these ones here, get rid of all the water from here. I mean, there's not that many chips on here. We've got a big chip here, one here, little one here, U12, and uh, yeah, that's about, that's about it. I wonder if these are specialist chips that you can that you can't buy. So one chip must be to do with the USB hub side of things, and one chip must be for the actual key inputs, and it's the key inputs which is not working. Anyway, let's start off by checking the USB cable. So I've just got my meter to continuity, so to begin with, let's go to the one that says ground. Okay, well that doesn't, uh, what's that one there? Okay, so that one's coming up on the shielding. Oh, of course, and the other one would be, the black one would be the, uh, the negative power. Right, so let's go on this outer one on the right hand side. Let's see where that comes up. One second, let me just poke through here, it's easier. Okay, so that's the red. So that's definitely okay, and let's go on the other side. And it should be the black. Which it is, and it's not coming up anywhere else. Right, now I need to do the two inner pins. So I'm just going to reach through here, I will be hitting the, the shield as well. But that's fine. That's the green. Actually, let's see if I can dodge that. Yeah, I've dodged that. Yeah, so that's the green, and now the last one is the white. Yes. Let's just do it right, so I've dodged that, and it's still on the white. So 100% the ribbon, uh, the uh, USB cable is okay, but I knew that anyway, but it's always nice to double check that. Right, I think first things first, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get IPA, and I'm just gonna clean out everything here. I can't see any water damage on this whatsoever. Doesn't look furry or anything. But remember the fault is different now than the initial fault. The fault now is that nothing's working so that says to me that there's a load of water maybe caught in these ones here. So let's get some IPA. By using this, hopefully, it will draw out any of that deionized water that's left in there and evaporate off. Clean the contacts as well. I'm just trying to dry out these little ribbon cable connectors. In fact, I'm going to get some canned air. Well, I think that's the water out of it. So let's put it back together, just uh, just kind of loose, and uh, let's see if anything's different now on the on the laptop. 
put that there so you can see it. Let's plug it in. I'm going to leave it open like this, otherwise it might short against different things, so I'm just going to leave it all open. No, still absolutely nothing. Do you know, I thought that was going to work. Slightly confused because remember I didn't turn it on when there was water. Well, I suppose upstairs there was a little bit of water, but when I opened up, it wasn't exactly saturated with water. Do you know what? Unless maybe I should disconnect one side of the ribbon cable and then see whether half of the board works or not. Yeah, there's definitely nothing happening there whatsoever. I'm going to feel, see if anything's getting warm. Right, this chip's warm, but it's not red hot. But that small black chip is warm. And it feels to be the chip itself, not underneath it. But maybe that's completely normal. I'm just going to see if the USB ports are still working. This is where you need another one and then you can try, you need a working one really, then you can try different things. Like right now I still don't know if it's the membrane causing the problem, you know, the key side or whether it's this board that's causing the problem. Yeah, okay. Right, so the USB ports are definitely still working. Okay, well I suppose what it could be is, it could be that the keyboard itself is still saturated and the, uh, the board here doesn't know what to make of it. You know, maybe a load of keys are being pressed at once. Let's, let's actually try to just undo this while it's still on. Okay, so that one's undone now. Now let's see if anything happens. Nope. I'm just going to see if the USB port is still going to work. Oh, interesting, look. I think when I disconnected this one, it came up with the number 7, but maybe it just maybe it's a certain things shorted together here. I'm just going to see if the USB port's working while the keyboard's disconnected. Yeah, it is. I'm going to just connect this one now. I'm going to unplug it. It's definitely not working. Well, I'm just going to take a close look at it, see if I can see anything obvious with the membrane itself. Because I, I can see the back of the keys. I can see the little circle pads. Let me just show you that. Okay, so you can see it there. Yeah, and when I press the key, you can see it's there. So I don't know how this works. I don't know whether it's just two sheets of, call it membrane, with kind of copper contacts, and when you press the key, the key forces the two sheets together. Or I don't know whether each key has a tiny, each key might hit a little rubber thing with a bit of copper on it, and carbon on it, and then that might touch this, which shorts it together. But saying that, look, it's, uh, there's only one contact here, isn't there? So there must be two sheets because obviously that doesn't work like, for example, an Xbox button. An Xbox button will have one, and then it will have a separate one around it. But this is all joined, so there must be two sheets. So I'm thinking that there's water in between the two sheets, or even forget about what I've done today, there's scale in between the two sheets, which is causing some buttons not to work. So I'm not 100% sure that it is a, a main board problem. I'm thinking more along the lines that is an actual problem with the keyboard here. So I'm just going to look at this closely to see if I can see any evidence.
I've been going across this little board here with my multimeter, just checking for the capacitors to see if they're short in just like one leg to ground, not both legs. So if you have a look here, I've got it on continuity. So these two are the negatives of the capacitors on the uh, by the USB ports here. And when I go across the capacitors, not all of them, because some of them are not connected to uh, ground, but most of them are just shortened on one on one side. And I've gone through, there's loads of little fuses everywhere on the other side here. You can see it says FL3. Let me zoom in and show a few of them to you. You can see this is FL3, with continuity, because it's shorting, this one here. And if you have a look over this side, this is FL2 by the other USB port, and that's okay. And let me just show you FL1. And here we have FL1 as well. So they all appear to be okay. The only thing that I can see, well, I mean, I haven't gone across absolutely everything, but the only thing I can see that looks different is when I go across these main connectors here. So basically, if I put one of the leads to the negative of the capacitor, it's not coming up anywhere on this one here. So I'm just going to do that now. Right, so I've got one lead to the negative of the capacitor. And look, if I go across here, it's not doing anything on any of them. But yet on the other one it is, but that might be completely normal. So watch this one now. I think it's the third one in from this side. Yeah, one, two, three. So it's this third one. I wonder if I connect it back up to my computer and if I was to get my tweezers and go from this one to some of the others, I wonder whether they would start doing inputs or not. Or does it, I suppose it just doesn't work. Well, I'm saying that, they are just switches, aren't they, turning on and off? They are just switches just doing that. Every time you press, it's just doing that. So maybe by me doing that, it would mimic presses. Then I would know if the board's faulty or whether the membrane's faulty. Am I going to blow something? I don't know. I'm not too sure. But the only thing that I haven't seen that's quite normal is this little diode here. So to begin with, I don't know why it says D3 and D5, so that's already confusing me. But it is giving me a read in both ways, and I thought normally when I do a diode in diode test, it will only give a read in one way. So let me zoom out a little bit so you can see the meter. Right, and there we go. So if I go black lead down the bottom and red lead up the top, I'm on diode test, you can see it's 0.18. Yeah? And if I go black lead at the top, red lead at the bottom, it's 1.35. So yes, they are different readings, but normally I thought when I do a diode, it says it's like open one way. But that might be completely normal. I don't know. I mean, there is a coil right next to it. This coil, there's continuity across this coil. If I go here and here, you can hear. So I don't really, I don't really know. I think what I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to connect it back up to the computer and I think I'm going to go across the ground with my tweezers and touch the other ones just to see what happens. I mean, if water's in here anyway, they've been shorting out everywhere, so it shouldn't really, should it really be any different? Maybe the damage is already done. So let's plug it in there. Just double check this still. Oh, I have to plug these in, don't I? Oh, actually, I don't need to plug them in because I'm just going across here. So I'm going to go between the third one. No, that's not doing anything. No, I thought it might do something. Right, okay, uh, sort of running out of options. What I'm thinking is, I'm thinking of trying to get IPA into this here. See, these are all spot welds here, so I can't actually take this off. I mean, if, if you see, if I sort of lift it up the corner. I mean, it is incredibly well made. It's just that uh, you can't get to it. So there's, lit there's, there's spot welds every inch. So, uh, I'm not going to be able to break every single one of them. Anyway, I'll keep looking and see if I can spot anything. Well, I'm starting to look closer at the keyboard, in particular the membrane, because if you think about it, 
certain buttons were working and now after I've cleaned it absolutely nothing is working and also look at all the water damage here so everything basically points to the fact that this has gone faulty in here. Now remember I was saying that I wasn't sure about the setup. Well, what I've done is I've just taken away the, uh, the metal back plate. You can see how it's like spot welded everywhere. So I've just taken up the corner here and I've just popped this key off so I can have a close look just at this corner once to get an idea of what's going on. Now they do definitely have these little things here that you press in, but if you look, there's no carbon on the back of that. So that's purely to let the key spring back up again. Annoyingly, it is just two very thin layers and then you press them together and there's a bit of carbon here, carbon here, and they press together to make the contact. Let me zoom in and show you. So if you look here, let's take off just this layer here and underneath now, this is like one layer, but there's actually two in here. So although it's one, I can't peel it away. But look, can you see that this one here has the track here and it goes round there and there, but look, can you see there's a very faint bit there? So that is basically the other side here. Let me just turn that over. Yeah, and now you can see on this side that this is the sort of bold one, and then this one here is the faint one. And again, look, again, it looks like kind of water damage, doesn't it? So I think this really has had a proper soaking. So I think what's happening is there's scale buildup in between these two layers on many, many of the keys. So I can't see how I can fix that because I can't get in there with anything. You know, unless I was to pierce it and try to drop IPA in there, I don't know, but I'd have to do that on every single key. So, uh, yeah, not sure what to do on this. So I've gone a little bit further. As you can see, I have actually separated the two layers. So you can see now that there's one contact up here and one contact here. And look, I've got it on continuity and it is very sensitive. It works like really well. Look, if I just touch that one there here and then go here, you can see it's working. And let's try to do it on the other side. Now I'm on the other contact. And you can see it's going off there. But then that does have like another circular thing to stop these things from shorting together and stuff. So do you know what? If I could get all the rivets off, this would be repairable because all I would have to do is take all these, uh, not rivets, the uh, spot welding. If I could get rid of them all and I could take this off, I could open up the membrane and then I could basically just give it a very gentle dry because what's happened is I think scales got in there. I think it's just as simple as that or maybe that even other bits they might have scale might have got through two tracks that are close together and maybe shorting it could be that and then it's taken out a whole whatever all the ones on that on that track will then be gone but this is impossible it is incredibly well made i mean it's literally every single inch and they're really really hard to break so i don't know how this is going to be repairable unfortunately which is a real, real shame. I mean, I'm sure now if the next keyboard I get isn't water damaged, if it was a problem with the board here, then I'm pretty sure I could easily swap parts over. And you know what? The, the fact of melting this off to get it off wasn't actually too bad. But the problem with this is how do I clean in between two membranes that are stuck together? They're stuck. I've had to physically take them apart and they weren't that easy. The IPA is never going to get in there. So I think this one here is going to be unfixable, unfortunately. Well, I'm so desperate to see the inside of this, to see exactly what's going on, that uh, I am actually going to drill out all the spot welds. So I've just done them here, and they do actually pop out okay, so let me just show you roughly what I'm doing. So I'm not going all the way through on them. If you get the pliers, hopefully they will just kind of pop off. There you go. There you go, you see? There you go. So it's going to take a long time, everything's going to be bent, but at least it will give me access to the inside of it. So I'm just going to do this off camera because it's probably going to take about half an hour. Right, just to lessen the chance of damage to the keys because the drill 
it's hard sometimes, it goes further through than you want it to. I'm just going to take them all off. I've taken a photo off it so I know where their bits go back on. The chances of this getting reassembled anyway are very slim. Just really doing this now for the uh, learning experience. Okay, so now I need to take out each of these scissor lifts. So there's a bit of a technique, but what I've been doing is it goes across the bottom here and then there's like two pins up here. So I've been just going in these side bits here and here and pushing up and then it goes over the pins. So watch this, you see there and there. Okay, that was a bad example because it's actually come apart. Most of the others have stayed together. Let's do this one here. So if I go up, and then you can see here it comes out. One more. Let's do this one here. Up, up, then it comes out. Right, that was an absolute epic. It's taken ages. There was over a hundred holes to drill, and then of course you had to take all these out. Had to take all the keys out. I'm pretty sure the little rubbery bits are actually attached to the membrane themselves, but a few of them fell out. Right, I'm hoping this is going to be quite satisfying now. So I should be able to, should be able to separate this. Excellent. Ooh. Right, and that's it. And I didn't actually do that much damage to that. It's ever so slightly bent, but that won't take long to straighten out at all. Right, so now let's have a look at this. Let's see, is it possible now to, first of all, see if there's any real damage on it? Hmm, worryingly, it doesn't look too bad. Let's see how this is going to separate. So it separates from this way here. There we go. Ah, uh, okay. Right, worryingly, that looks... There doesn't look to be anything wrong with that at all. I was expecting to see a load of scale build up and stuff. So it looks like the problem might well be on the board. But you never know. Well, saying that, actually, they're just the bottom presses. It's in between these layers. That's the important one. Right, let's see if I can peel these off now. I can definitely see water staying in here, all around here. Right, and it looks like the top that's all stuck. Yeah, I can see a lot of water staining. I mean, some of this might have been from me, but it seems to be... Well, I don't know, it could be from me, couldn't it? Because I was drying it. In hindsight now, because the distilled water, the deionized water didn't work, I wish I'd just taken it apart straight away, but I was trying, obviously, to do my best to actually fix it. Right, so I've just got to try to take all this off and then we can have a look at it closely by separating it. Success. So now I'm going to take this over to the blue mat and uh, see if we can separate it, see how it separates. And then uh, test it again and this time see if we can get any key presses when we touch these things together. Right, so I've managed to separate the two layers of the membrane. If you have a look, it's, uh, I don't know if it's gonna, how well it's going to come across on the camera, but can you see there's definitely quite a few dark traces. So if you look here, they're kind of all nice and silvery, but then look here, really dark ones. And again, all the way across here, they're all dark. So I wonder, does the dark ones signify 
where possibly water damage has occurred. So I'm going to do some testing on this. You can see the same on here. Like a lock fit is just normal, but then you have dark bits like that. And uh, if you look down here, see there's like uh, normal bits, but then particularly dark bits. It's hard to see with the light bouncing off and stuff, but you can see here that that's a normal looking one. But then these two are very dark. So I'm going to get my continuity test. In fact, you can see that that one's a mixture of colours. And I'm going to see if these dark bits are actually still conducting or not. So I'm pleased I've managed to get it apart and I haven't actually ripped anything, which is, uh, which is good. So it's made up of that, that, and all these bits here. So a lot's gone into this. Okay, so I've been learning quite a lot. So basically the thing that connects the one board to the other board, because obviously these things have to short against these ones to actually make the key work, is this little finger down here. Can you see there's like a finger here? And basically these ones here, these little tracks are exposed and these tracks here are exposed. And when you put them both together, that's what joins up the two boards as far as I can see. Now, unfortunately, there is quite a few things that are not right. So basically, all the dark ones are not doing, not all of them, but some of them are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. So let me just go across one of the tracks here to show you uh, a thought that I found. Right, so watch this now. I've got my meter on continuity. So when I put the wires together, it goes. Now have a look at this one here. Can you see that the track's completely gone here? Yeah. There's no track there at all, but watch this. If I go, for example, between here and here, you can hear it. If I go between here, you can hear it, but look, you can't hear it here, yeah? So I can hear it here, but not here. And yet this side's okay, because basically there's a tiny little break here. So when that's broken there, it will knock out all the following line going along. And basically, one track will actually feed quite a few different keys. So let's just go on to this one here, the one with the ribbon cable. Yeah, so the ribbon cable's up here. And if we were just to take, let's say, a random one here, so let's take this one here. Watch how many it connects to. So we've got this one, which will go to this one, which will go around here to this, across to here, and then back up, up, up to here. Yeah, and then from here, it will go down, it will connect to there, and then it will go all the way up to one of the pins on the actual ribbon cable. So if I was to put my meter on, which one would it be? That one? There, that one there, yeah? So you can see that one part of the ribbon cable might feed, for example, five keys, and then another part of the ribbon cable will feed another five or six keys. So that's why sometimes you have people that say, you know, like, for example, three or four or five keys are not working, in which case then, it's very unlikely just to be a dirty key. It's probably a track that's gone that's feeding all those keys together. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty interesting. So I think what I'm gonna do is just muck around for a little bit longer. I'm not gonna be able to get it working because obviously the case itself is all mucked up. And if the case has kinks and bumps in, all that's gonna happen is these two are gonna short together. They both need to be perfectly flat. If they short together, it's gonna be doing key presses all the time, which is uh, no good. This is just more a sort of learning experience. But I am gonna try to connect up the ribbon cable to this uh, board again and see if anything happens on my computer. And then as soon as I find anything interesting, I will start filming again. But I think I found the main cause of the corrosion just here. So do you remember those fingers that I was talking about before? Let me show you this one here. Do you remember I showed you these ones here? And for example, if I was to go across them, you can hear that there's like continuity. Well look here, these are also exposed fingers here. And if we now look onto the other side, you see how corroded that is. Let me zoom right in. There we go, so I reckon that this is why it wasn't working, because this wasn't making a good contact with the above board. You can see how, uh, how bad that is. So I'm just going to mess around with it for a bit longer, see if I can get any keystrokes working at all. Right, okay, I've got some working, but only when I put pressure on that bad thing that I showed you. So if you have a look, I've got a... Uh, is that one working? Something's working down here. Okay, so I've got some sort of forward slash working. I've got delete working, equals. But very few... Uh,
hash working. Yeah, so I am getting there. I am getting there. I'm pretty sure I'm coming to the conclusion that it definitely was a, uh, a problem with water damage on here. But when I started, I definitely had like the Q and the W working, but and most of the numbers. But at this moment in time, none of them are working. But maybe I've damaged the tracks further in separating them off. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm just basically going through it bit by bit, trying to find out where the tracks go, see which ones are broken, because it only takes a couple of broken ones to throw off most of you know most of it, depending on where the brakes are. So uh, yeah, getting there bit by bit. Now trying to peel this away because the reason you have this is so this doesn't short against this side here and the only bits that are exposed are the actual bits for the button. But the problem is I can't actually trace the tracks or see where the brakes are because I can't get through this to get to the tracks. So basically I'm uh, peeling this off now. So if you're expecting to see a working keyboard, there's, there's no point in watching any further because it definitely won't be working. What I would like to show is just a few buttons working on the computer. There we go, so now I have access to the track. Right, and I can see up here that I've taken some of the track off on these bits here. And also there's an awful lot of black tracks on here. Right, so I'm just going to go through this now, see how many breaks there are. But I might as well give up, there's far too many brakes. Basically the dark lines are pretty much where the brakes are, but not all of them. But let me just zoom in to show you a good example. Right, so you see this tiny little black mark here. You can see that there's continuity before it. And even if I go up here, you can see there's still continuity on there, but watch this. It doesn't go through. Yeah, so basically there's a break. It's fine here, but not here. Yeah, fine here but not here. So there's a, uh, there'd be just a tiny little break there. Works there, not there. So yes, you could touch that up. If there was just one, that'd be fine. But the problem is there's loads of them. So uh, where are we here? Let's see if there's continuity on this one. No, so this is fine here. Yeah, that's fine there. And there, can you see it's gone here? completely gone and I haven't even touched that bit so now that track won't work so you can see there's just loads of tracks everywhere that are not going to work so this will work fine not sure about this here let's see yes no gone actually that could be because it's going under okay yeah no that's fine so that's going under there so in that instance that one's okay but there's just too many there's just too many that are not working this one here should be okay yeah, uh, let's try this big one here. Right, so where are we? Gone, gone here. So look, here's here's fine, gone, because there's a break there. There you go, look, it's just, there you go. There, look how easy that's coming away. So if I try to do that on a good bit, you see it's not coming away, but this is just, it's just burnt. It's just basically, it's just gone, it's just rotten. So uh, yeah, I'm happy that I proved the fault. All that corrosion didn't happen with just me using deionized water. You can see from earlier on when I showed you the back here, you can see all the rust on it. So this one here has definitely been water damaged and there's no point in taking it any further. But as I said, I've got two more en route to me and hopefully, one of them might have a good keyboard, but it might have a faulty board here. I think that this board might well be okay, in which case, you see, I can just remove it from here and then uh, even use this USB cable. If not, just unsolder it, solder it onto the next one. And I'm hoping out of the three to at least get one working one. But if the other two are also water damaged, because they're from a business seller, there's a very good chance 
uh, we'll have to see. I mean, maybe on those ones, it, on the other ones, it said at least one or more keys not working. Now on this one here, more, I would say 70 to 80% of the keyboard didn't work. But let's say if it was just one or two keys that weren't working, then I could get my silver conductive pen, strip it down like this and try to touch it up. The only problem is, Am I going to do that? The drilling and stuff to get it all off takes an awful lot of time. I didn't mind doing it once so I can see how it all works. But me getting this back together, if I had to, for example, fix one or two of those keys, look at the state of this. I mean, no matter how much I straighten this up, it's always going to be crooked. So I think unless there's a problem with the board, I think you're wasting your time. I mean, personally, I think you're wasting your time buying 40 ones of these. You can buy a one with two year guarantee from CEX in the UK for £28. All the second hand ones seem to be around £10-ish, depending from the business seller. I got two of them for I think it was £15. But you're looking normally because of postage around about £10. It's, it's just not worth it. It's not worth putting the time in. But if there was just a problem with this board here, so if it definitely wasn't a water damage problem, then it doesn't take too long to take the plastic off the back because the plastic off, off the back actually came off pretty easy you know that bit uh, this bit here came away from the keyboard itself quite easy so that wouldn't be too that wouldn't be too hard to do so hopefully when the other two arrive I'm uh, I am actually looking forward to them but what I'm thinking is like when you read the reviews a lot of people are slating Apple now I'm not an Apple fanboy whatsoever I, I I, I have a Samsung, my daughter loves Apple, loads of people do love Apple, but I have had Apple in the past, there's nothing wrong, the products are nice, I do like the products, but they are, I think they're expensive for what they are. But saying that, I think this is incredibly well made, I mean it really is, the way all those spot wells, they're all fantastic. This didn't go faulty because of, it got, went faulty because it got water damaged. Maybe Apple could do more to, you know, provide it, make it more waterproof possibly, or it's, they could definitely do more to make it more accessible to get into it. Because if you didn't have to strip this all down, if it did get water damaged, then there's a chance that you could fix it by undoing, let's say, eight screws at the back and then letting it dry out. But the way they've done it here, it's kind of indestructible as far as like the build is concerned, but it doesn't stop the user problems of dropping water or coke or coffee on it. Also, I'm not sure how good a system this is. Maybe all keyboards are like this. Well, I know I've got a mechanical keyboard and I think that's got a separate switch for each one. Now that's always gonna be a winner because it means if one or two buttons go faulty, you can swap them. With this thing here, I don't know how good a design this is. If this was made with a circuit board, just like for example an Xbox or a PlayStation controller, and then you actually had the tracks on there, and each of these buttons had a little bit of carbon at the bottom, I wonder would that be a lot better, I wonder would that be a better job. But maybe it's not as responsive as using something like this when you're typing pretty quick. But I don't know, I mean the Xbox controller seems to, you seem to be able to hit the buttons particularly fast on that. So maybe this is a kind of a, a cheaper way of doing it. So uh, yeah, look off the product and stuff, lovely. The design offer on as far as this is concerned, not so good. As far as getting into it, an absolute 100% nightmare apart from taking the back bit off but even that back bit is still a bit of a nightmare but it's doable so uh, yeah that is it for this video unfortunately I couldn't get it to work but I sort of knew that every time you look online people say that uh, you know they're not repairable you will just break them when you take them apart I think I did pretty good for my first attempt and I did strip it down as far as the keyboard's concerned completely into all its different many many different layers so uh, yeah I'm pleased and I'm confident that I know what the fault was. It's just in this instance, I can't fix it. But if you've got any enjoyment from it, please give it a thumbs up. Please check out my other video when it comes out. I might try to fix the two together on the one video. I might, uh, I don't know, it depends what's wrong with them. We'll have to see. But uh, yeah, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye now.